This video is for entertainment purposes only and is not financial advice. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and today I'll be talking about A2 Milk's most recent trading update. I'll be taking a look at the announcement, talking about some of the key points from the announcement and some of the key takeaways from the conference call, as well as updating my intrinsic value based on today's announcement. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe, but with no time wasted, let's get right into the video. So A2 Milk is currently trading at $6.62 per share, down 12.78% on the back of the announcement. At one point in time, it was trading at roughly $6.05 per share, but has since then recovered uh, once the ASX market opened at roughly 12, 12 30. So about two weeks ago, I did make a video on A2 Milk talking about the recent dip in its share price. And I highlighted this slide over here, especially this statement made by the A2 Milk management team when they provided a downgrade in February, 2021. So this statement over here says, the outlook for FY21 assumes the actions being taken to reactivate the Daigo slash reseller channel deliver a significant improvement in quarter and quarter growth from Q3 of 21 to Q4 of 21. So this is a big assumption over here. And in today's update provided by management, we see the opposite happening, that the actions taken by management didn't actually reactivate the Daigo channel. So the key points from today's announcement are that the trading dynamics in the China infant nutrition market have been and continue to be challenging for the A2 milk company and many international competitors. While A2 Milk's Q3 21 trading was broadly in line with plan, it is clear that the actions taken to address challenges in the Daigo reseller and Seabeck channels will not result in sufficient improvement in Q3 of 21 in pricing, sales, and inventory levels to meet our previous guidance based on April sales being well below planned. So this is a confirmation that the strategy that they intended to take to reactivate the Daigo channel did not work. In addition, the board tasked management to undertake a comprehensive review of inventory in the trade and this work has indicated that the level of channel inventory is higher than had been anticipated. As a result of the inventory review, it is clear that the challenges in the Daigo slash reseller and Seabeck channels have been exacerbated by excess inventory and difficulties with visibility. So we get two key important news over here. First of all, the Daigo channel had not been reactivated and is still struggling. And secondly, there had been a buildup of inventory more than what management had expected in the previous update. All right, so what are management's plans to turn things around? So in today's announcement, the company said that it will work with its customers and distributors to improve the dating of inventory by swapping or replacing outdated suppliers slash distributor inventory. It also mentioned that it will reduce sales to Daigo reseller and Seabag channels for the rest of Q4 of 21. And this may continue into Q1 of 22, significantly reducing sales for FY21. It also mentioned that it will increase marketing investment in Q4 of 21 and into FY22 to drive consumer demand. So based on this information, we can expect lower sales in Q4 of 21. We can also expect lower sales in next year's results. And we can also expect higher marketing spend or a reduction in the EBITDA margin going forward as this company spends more money on investing in marketing, all right? So this is management's plans to turn things around in the short term, and currently they are undertaking a strategic review of the business, and they will provide us with an update in August. So this is more of a short-term remedy to the issues that they are currently facing with the Daigo channel, as well as excess inventory. So now before I move on, I did want to highlight a few key points that I took out of the conference call that they had today on the back of the trading update. I spent one hour after work listening in and jotting down some useful information. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. But the first thing that I noted was that it was mentioned in the conference call that the prices for English label infant formula was decreasing. And as a result of that, management are looking to put up prices for English label product to maintain a premium brand position in the market. So the current price for a tin of infant formula 
it was mentioned in the conference call was roughly 150 RMB and management's ideal price would be above 200 RMB. So what management is trying to do is trying to increase the prices of their product and the way that they could do that is by simply increasing the cost of their product to suppliers slash distributors. Now this is quite counterintuitive to their current position because they have an excess level of inventory but yet they're trying to increase their prices but uh, that's management's plan basically to maintain a premium brand position. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out to see whether this strategy will work or whether it'll fall on its face. All right. So that's a very important key thing to note. Management has also mentioned that the brand health measures show no change because that was a good question from an analyst asking about whether there's been any impairment in the A2 Milk brand. And management also did mention that the net promoter score for A2 Milk is the highest in relation to its competitors. Another key thing to note as well is that the share buyback which was mentioned in the announcement was dependent on their strategic review on how they can drive growth and consumer demand particularly for China. So if based on their strategic review they think they have uh, more than enough capital on hand they'll buy back shares. If not then they will keep that cash on hand and they will provide us with an update in August. In addition, management is not factoring in a recovery for a retail Daigo for the rest of FY21. And they also note that actual Australian retail sales was insignificant. So last year, Australian sales was roughly 250 million, but this year that number is basically nothing. So um, that goes to show that most of Australian retail sales was actually Daigo trade. And with that Daigo channel being shut, there basically hasn't been any domestic sales to Australians or New Zealanders. So that is really interesting to note as well. All right, so now let's talk about forward guidance. Now in terms of revenue, the company is targeting for uh, 1.2 to 1.25 billion dollars. Now the reason for the significant drop from 1.4 billion is because of lower than expected sales in the fourth quarter of 21 versus the prior update as well as the further ta actions taken to rebalance the channels by actively reducing sales in May and June. So basically there's way too much inventory in the sales channels so what they're trying to do is reduce sales to their suppliers and distributors so that the suppliers and distributors will be able to reduce their inventory as well. So that will take a hit to their sales going forward into May and June. In terms of EBITDA margin, they did guide for an EBITDA margin in the order of 11 to 12%. Now that significantly lower EBITDA margin, and I should say significant because this has dropped from 24 to 26% on the back of lower sales expected in Q4 of 21 versus prior plan, as well as a stock provision of approximately 80 to 90 million. So this stock provision will essentially be used to cover any expenses relating to the swapping out or replacement of outdated stock as well as uh, writing off some of the stock that the A2 milk company holds as well. And another factor contributing to the lower EBITDA margin was also one of cost approximately $8 million associated with the implementation of a new ERP system. So now let's move on to my Excel spreadsheet where I have updated the numbers based on this new forward guidance from management. So over here I have my Excel spreadsheet and as you can see over here I did revise my revenue based on the new targets of 1.2 to 1.5 billion dollars as well as reducing my EBITDA margin. So based on the updated outlook provided by management, I've gone ahead and reduced the revenue growth rates for my bear case by 2% for the first five years and 1% for years six to years 10. So now I have a growth rate of 6% for the first five years and 4% for years six to years 10. So I've also reduced my EBITDA target from 30% to 25%. Now the reason why I did reduce the EBITDA target margin to 25% is because management did plan to further increase the level of marketing in Q4 of 2020 and into FY22. Consequently, a higher level of marketing investment is continuing with a significant marketing campaign in China in Q4 of 21. Marketing investment will be increased particularly in digital marketing to help drive consumer demand. So I don't think this will be a short-term thing. I think this will continue on uh, into the future of this company and with increased marketing does result in a lower EBITDA margin. As a result of that, I've reduced my EBITDA margin from 30 to 25%. And and I've also factored in a recovery of the EBITDA margin from uh, currently 11% 
at 5% each year up to an EBITDA margin of 25% going forward. And as a result of the decrease in growth rates, I've reduced my terminal multiple by two times to get a terminal multiple of 11 times. And this gives me an intrinsic value for my bear case of $2.96. And moving on to my base case, I re I've reduced growth rates by 3% for each uh, first five years as well as year six to years 10. And uh, EBITDA margin the same, expecting a growth rate of 5% each year targeting 25%. And I've reduced my terminal multiple by two times as a result of the decrease in growth rates. And that gives me a present value sum of $5.13. For my bull case scenario, I've reduced growth rates by three and 2% and also reduce my terminal multiple by two times to give me an intrinsic value of $8.20. Now, in terms of the probabilities for each of these bull, bear, and base cases, I've not changed this from my previous uh, calculations. So this gives me a blended scenario EV value of roughly $4.89 per share. When I add back my net cash per share, I get an equity value per share of $5.91. Now the current share price of A2 Milk is roughly $6.62, New Zealand dollars by the way, not Aussie dollars. So at the moment, it does look like the company is trading roughly to my calculation, although my calculation did drop quite a bit from my previous video uh, that I talked about two weeks ago. And the reason for that huge drop was actually because of the EBITDA margin dropping quite substantially from uh, 24 to 26% to now 11 to 12%. And the key question for me now is whether that EBITDA margin will be able to recover quickly or whether it will stay low for the foreseeable future, whether you know the cost related to revitalizing the Daigo channel will continue on for longer than the company expects. Because if it does, then you know your company isn't gonna be worth as much as if this whole situation is a short-term thing. So hopefully that gives you some insight on the valuation of A2 Milk. As always, I have a spreadsheet down below, so feel free to download this and play around with the numbers and let me know what you guys find. So this is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was insightful. Let me know what you think about A2 Milk, whether you've decided to pull the trigger today or not, good or bad, buy or sell. So personally, I don't have any shares in A2 Milk, but I will give you guys an update if I decide to buy shares in them. As always, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, take care.